Have you been looking for a harmonic strain wave gear mount that not only has a high resolution encoder but allows you to do a plethora of things like visual and astrophotography? Well, Ioptron has a solution for you and I'm here to show it off for you tonight. Let me introduce you to the HAE 29EC mount. My name is Max and welcome to Maximum Astronomy. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel for another review. Today we're checking out the Ioptron HAE29 mount. Now I'm practically sitting almost on the ground for this review because I'll be honest, this mount, even with the tripod, is not the tallest in the segment, but it is certainly one of the best performing ones in the segment and you'll quickly know why by the end of this video. First and foremost, I want to introduce the mount though to you for those that may not have ever heard of the HAE series from my Optron. This is their segment into the strain wave gear mount market. And this particular mount is really right in the middle of the different options that they offer. They do have smaller versions that go all the way down to 14 pounds of payload. And then they have really big ones that go all the way up to, I believe, 80 pounds of payload or somewhere in that neighborhood where it's just crazy amount of payload to weight ratio this one no exception what is interesting about the middle of the ground with this one being the 29 series is that this one's actually the size of the AM3 but even though it boasts payload capacity is very similar to the AM5 which I think is really interesting so the AM5 numbers are just a tiny bit more with and without the counterweights this one boasts 28 pounds without a counterweight 40 pounds if you add a counterweight which is really some decent numbers for a mount that only weighs eight pounds. So this thing is so lightweight, you could just pick it up with one hand and just take it right out of your garage fully assembled and really not have to worry about lugging anything heavy around. This mount is fully CNC machined aluminum. Its fit and finish is just like other Ioptron products. I've personally thought Ioptron has always done a fantastic job of this in the previous generations with their products. And the new Strainwave gear mounts just like this are certainly no exception. Now this mount is small, let me tell you. I actually have my original Ioptron cube here, and you can see if I kind of incline the cube, it's almost the same size as this. And for those of you that have seen the cubes before, you know how small these are already by themselves. So to have a complete strain wave mount that can handle up to 40 pounds if you put a counterweight on it and it be this small, it's really quite remarkable. Now in this video, I'm not going to go into all the detail specifics of this mount because of course, if you're interested, you're just gonna look those up anyway. But I am gonna give you my honest review of this mount and I wanna touch on a few different things, some features that I love, and also a couple of things that I don't really love. Now this mount has built-in Wi-Fi that comes standard from the factory. You just download a free app on your mobile device or your laptop to control it. You can purchase an additional hand controller. Unfortunately, that is quite pricey. However, the newer hand pad is an OLED display, which means that it has much better usage for cold weather temperatures. A lot of people remember the old Celestron hand pads and the Mead hand pads. They always got real slow and 
just took a long time to respond whenever it would drop uh, down into the 30s at a star party or whatever. You'd usually have to get a, a dew heater strap and just try to heat them up to get the performance back. But now with the new OLED technology in the iOptron hand controllers, that's certainly no longer a concern. It is a little bit of a bummer, though, for the over $3,000 price point of this mount that they don't give it to you in the box. In terms of computer boards, iOptron has figured everything inside of the mount, so you do not need to have any additional accessories. You can just plug in your power cable, turn it on just as it is, and all of the functionality and connectivity is already built into the mount, which is absolutely an A-plus for me. Now, off the back here, you do have a power supply port. You do have a USB support for hooking up your laptop, or if you want to do software updates, you do have power ports on the Dovetail saddle for things like auto guiders and to run your cameras and your dew heaters off of. So iOptron really carried over some of those features from the CEM series where they built in connectivity on the dovetail saddles and carried it over to this generation of products, which is really, really nice for the Astro Imager. Now I want to talk a little bit about what makes this specific mount so special and why it designates the brand of EC. EC stands for encoder. And a lot of strain wave mounts out there don't offer the ability for you to spec them out with an encoder like this. This means that on the RA axis, on that strain wave gear, there is a high precision encoder installed that allows us to track so well that it almost mitigates the need of needing to auto guide. And in my personal testing of this, I ran this mount over to M44, the Beehive cluster, with my DSLR installed with this Comet Hunter optical tube that you see here installed in the video and it gives us 730 millimeters of focal length and using my DSLR on the Beehive I was able to achieve three minutes of unguided exposures before we started to finally see the smallest hint of star trail. Now I will also remind you that I did a visual polar alignment with this. Ioptron has a really nifty polar alignment procedure built in called Polar Iterate Align into the hand pad. And what it basically does is it goes to the first star and has you use the altitude knob on the mount and also the left and right on the keypad to center the star halfway to center. You'll hit enter. It'll go over to the next star and it'll basically tell you to do the exact same thing except with the azimuth adjustments on the mount. And you're just going to keep slowly basically walking that star to center. So you're going to go back and forth between star number one and star number two several times until eventually you get it right in the center. Now I did this just by visual astronomy, so by no means was my polar alignment dead on. So for the fact that it gives three minutes unguided when I just did a visual polar alignment, that is pretty astonishing in my personal opinion. So that tells me that if you're a serious astro imager considering this mount, I'll bet you could push it really to some hard limits. The RA encoder though is quite expensive. You're looking at about a thousand dollars if not just a little bit more in order to spec out a mount with that. However, iOptron is really fantastic in that way that they allow you to basically take any of their mounts that they offer and spec them with a high resolution encoder if you choose to pay the price difference. I kind of call them the trim levels at iOptron. And it's actually one of the things that I've always personally really appreciated about iOptron is that they have different trims of mounts for all types of different users. You can fit them with iPolar, with their integrated computer on board called iMate. You can fit it with the high precision encoder. You can fit it, you know, in just basically any different way that you want to. And I think that that's always been such a huge selling point. But if you're interested, iOptron is one of the only ones in the market that offer a high resolution encoder for this price point. I want to talk about the tripod. Now, when I first unboxed this from iOptron, this is the first thing I thought was going to be the weakling of this mount, and certainly I was dead wrong. I mean, uh, I'll be the first to admit that I don't think I've seen a more stable tripod than the supplied iOptron carbon fiber tripod. They're about inch and a half legs. They're not terribly big, but even with something as heavy as this, I've also tried my Celestron nine and a quarter optical tube on this before, and it was just as stable and solid even with that 25 pound optical tube hanging off the side in altazimuth mode. This is is one of the nicest and most stable tripods I have ever personally gotten my hands on before and I can see why a lot of people like them. Now of course this does not fit every application and if you're 
putting something like a C11 on this, it might be too much. But in my case, for my optical tubes ranging from 15 pounds to about 28 pounds or so, this carbon fiber tripod more than exceeded my expectations for stability. I do really appreciate though that on the carbon fiber tripod you can set it up without having to have the mount attached because the little spreader plate here just attaches by this little star nut underneath. The bolt doesn't go through into the mount. The mount attaches to the tripod in the same way that the CEM series used to where you have the two slotted bolts on the side and you'll just line up the holes and then attach the bolts and tighten them up with the included hardware to secure the mount to the tripod. On average, from my visual observations that I did, this tripod gives about two seconds of dampening time. Now that's sitting on grass, of course, but two seconds for dampening is pretty good. The only thing I can kind of say is for us taller people like myself that are about six feet tall, this is not the tallest mount. And in fact, this mount head really only sits about three and a half feet off the ground at its highest point with the tripod extended all the way. So unfortunately, it's a little bit on the shorter side, but that just means you'll have to get yourself a good observing chair. There are two things about this mount, though, that I really don't like. One of them is that we do have this included Allen wrench here. The only problem is, is that the mount literally uses nothing on this that uses this Allen wrench. You'll just put it through here and torque down the bolt to secure the mount to the tripod. But when it comes time to changing the incline of the mount, let's say you want to switch it from EQ mode to Altaz mode, you need to actually remove the pin that's in here and change the pin position. There's three positions, 0 to 30, 30 to 60, and 60 to 90. My only gripe is that that pin is a flathead screwdriver. So instead, it would have made more sense to make this a flathead screwdriver on one side so that you could have an all-inclusive one tool to use for this mount. The one thing, though, that is really of caution is when you remove that pin, this little ball joint in here with that gear that adjusts the angle of the mount for us, it drops down. So which means the entire mount head is basically free to move at that point. So if you have an optical tube on here, the mount is going to either dip forward or flip over, or it's going to go backwards and dent the optical tube or fall over that way. So you want to make absolutely sure that you have adjusted the mount to whatever angle you need it for the night, or if you're using EQ or Altaz, whichever it is, before you put your optical tube on to avoid any risk to your equipment. Now, if you're a visual astronomer, I will say I tested this for several, several nights visual on my nine and a quarter and also with this optical tube here. And I will say this is impressive visually, both in Altaz or in EQ mode. My experience is that it puts everything about 90% of center of the field of view on the eyepiece. And that was also with my nine and a quarter optical tube on this. If you get a good star alignment in Altaz mode, you can count on really good accuracy and really good tracking through the night. Now the question is, what does this mount compare to? What does it stack up to? This one in particular with the high resolution encoder is kind of sort of on its own little spot in the market. If you were looking at the base HAE29, I would say you have Skywatcher's new equivalents that are out there. You've got the AM5 and AM3 series. You've got Warp Drive. You've got Pegasus. You've got a plethora of choices when it comes to strain wave harmonic mounts. But what makes this one particularly special is that use of the RA encoder. And not many of them allow you to option it with a high precision encoder like this. Now this one is expensive. It's $3,400. So it is quite expensive and it does cost a lot more than the standard AM3 or AM5 or the similar competitors. But look at what you're getting for that $3,400 compared to the competition. You don't have to auto guide really if you don't want to and you're getting much higher tracking performance out of the strain wave. And if you're an astrophotographer, you're getting a much higher potential for longer imaging sessions with less headache for tracking errors. In my personal opinion, this has been one of my favorite mounts I've ever tested in a product review. And it's not because I've always been a fan of Ioptron products, but because just out of the box it's worked, and it's worked is exactly as advertised, and there's really not a whole lot about this mount I would change. It attaches to the tripod really easily, the tripod itself is super high quality and stable, the mount itself has really nice knurled hand knobs for easy adjustments, even with gloves 
gloves on. It's got all the features including Wi-Fi. It's got a nice OLED hand controller you can purchase for it. So it is really a full-fledged mount. And it comes in a nice padded case just like most of its competitors do as well. All in all, my final thoughts though on this mount is that if you're a serious astro imager or you're looking for a high precision mount for visual astronomy that maybe sometimes you'll dabble into astrophotography and you don't want the hassle of having this big imaging rig with lots of cords going everywhere, this might just be the answer for you. And this mount actually would fit a lot of people, including myself even, when some nights I just want to look at stuff and other nights I want to do some hardcore imaging for the weight capacity that it offers and the lightweight ability to just carry it to any star party or even out from your garage, this thing is an A plus in stability and performance. And I really do think that if you're on the market for a strain wave gear mount and you want something that's just another level better than what is just commonly available from your local astronomy shop, I think you should give the HAE 29 EC or one of Ioptron's other EC mounts a good look depending on if you need something bigger or smaller for your application. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that when you look for your own strain wave gear mount that you put the Ioptron HAE series at the forefront of your list to check out because I'll bet they have one that just fits what you need. Until next time, keep looking up. Clear skies to you all.